Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a hospital pharmacist, and I graduated not too long ago. In 2020. This video was specifically about pharmacy rotations, how I worked up my patients, um, how I created my moderating forms, and just tips on overall how to succeed in pharmacy rotation. All right, let's get started. Appy rotations. What is it and what does it stand for? For those that are not familiar, Appy stands for Advanced Pharmacy Practice Experience. Last year of pharmacy school is when you are done with didactics and you start to have a full year of clinical experience. Out of all the rotations, internal medicine is considered to be, well, one of the hardest and most important rotations. Rotations are so important. It's an opportunity to showcase your abilities to prospective employers or residency directors. You're also exposed to a plethora of different areas of pharmacy and you get to learn so much about yourself. It's an important time if you're still unsure of what you want to pursue. Um, you get to gain all these different experiences and it kind of gives you a better picture. How to impress your preceptors. First, by being thorough and knowledgeable about your patients. How? Well, by having a good monitoring sheet. <laughs> my computer's out of ink. So I had to ask my boyfriend to print this out for me. And it was a struggle. He had to like meet me after work and give this to me. I have one copy to show you guys. I'm like, I spilled coffee on it. <sighs> I knew this would happen to me. Right. This is my pride and joy. I worked really hard on this. So this was my patient monitoring form during my internal medicine rotation. And I tweaked it over the years, made it a little bit better. Um, now that I'm a hospital pharmacist and I can look back on what I would want my students to know and keep track of too. And just what I've learned after finishing my clinical rotations and graduating. So this is my baby. And I want to show you guys this today. I have a link down below if you want as well so that you can use it for your rotations. Okay, I'll go by section by section. So the first section um, is pretty much what I call the snapshot of the patient. You know, why are they here? What happened in the very beginning? What do we need to know? So first off, who's the patient? Their admission diagnosis and their HMP. So oftentimes when you work up your patients in the morning, you're gonna, <laughs> Sometimes it can be a busy day. Like let's say you have like 16 patients on your roster. You're gonna have, not gonna have enough time to, you know, type up your own H&P. But oftentimes there's always going to be H&P note from the provider. They usually drop that or it's from the ED provider too. So I'll just quickly copy and paste that onto here. Um, the main thing is just to have their past medical history, you know, does the patient have history of diabetes, hypertension, do they have AFib on DOAX or warfarin, you know, things like that. And, you know, the reason for coming in, a brief summary of their story, what happened, did they have a fall at home, was it witness, unwitness, etc. And, you know, generally what the what's important in the HMP. And then the initial vitals and in labs when they first came in. So this is really important because you want that initial snapshot of how that patient was like at the very beginning. Just so that you have an idea during their stay if they're improving or they're worsening. And as pharmacists, I think this section is really important. Their whole medication list. I purposely put a section here for status. So as pharmacists, we write, you know, was it restarted? Was it held? What's the reason why it's being held? If there's no reason why it's being held, then you kind of put a question mark and you can bring that on rounds. Just because, you know, oftentimes we want to restart their medications if it's appropriate and there's no reason why to hold it. Just because, you know, when they get discharged and they're going to restart them back at home, we want to see what they're like with all of their medication regimen. Just because at the hospital, we want to make sure that they're re-monitored and there's no drug-drug interactions that we're missing. And if it's appropriate to restart, then why not restart? Next, we have um, the daily trackers. So for this one, you know, we track their daily vitals, we track their daily labs, and um, down here is their micro section. So I have it up to the first five days because the average length of stay in the United States is about 4.5 days. But don't worry, that's why I have the backside. So just in case we always have those few patients that stay at the hospital for a longer period of time, 
So I have it all the way up until day 13. I, mean, I think this is really important and important internal medicine because, you know, their preceptor is always going to ask you, you know, how's the patient doing today? And you have to, you know, give them an update when you present your patients, do your soap, soap format and you know make it clear you know their wc is trending down today it's you know 11 compared to 13 yesterday or you know all oh, yesterday they're afebrile um today however they're spiking a fever at blah blah blah, blah. and you know that's important to note you now is the patient getting better are they worsening do we need to tweak their antibiotics do we need to de-escalate things like that Micro is really important too. You know, oftentimes when I was first starting as a student, you know, I was like, oh, they got urine cultures. It's still pending. But oftentimes we forget to follow up on these cultures. Sometimes the result a couple days later and no one's really checking on it or, you know, sometimes the team could miss it. So that's something that you could catch and you can help the team. Say, hey, um, the urine culture has resulted. The ceftriaxone he's on right now, it's not sensitive. Um, I think we should change it to this. So... I also even have a section for imaging. So you can like know like if they had any CTs of the head, CT of the chest, you know, anything noteworthy to put in here. Now oftentimes if the patient's on anticoagulation, you know, let's say if they're on a DOAC for our protocol, if they had any um, TIA or any stroke recently within the past 14 days or so, they shouldn't be restarted on their DOAC. So imaging is also important too. Sometimes that's something that we need to catch. And what's handy is that I purposely made it in this format so that you can fold it and easily put in your white coat. And the reason I do this also is because every single day I print out the patient's medication list. Um, I print it out and I fold it and I fold this on the inside. So every patient has their own stack of papers like this. So um, when I'm on rounds, you know, oftentimes I won't have a computer on wheels. So I can't, you know, look up their labs and vitals and imaging like the doctors can. So for me, it's really handy to have this. So, you know, I'm not behind and I'm up to date on everything. So if you want to support me and you want to buy this for your rotations too, I have my Etsy link down below. Yeah, I hope you like it important to print out the medication list every day because sometimes there's medication changes overnight uh, and you have to catch those. Let me see if I can find an example. I need another piece of paper. Let's use this. This is the medication list for the day. So what I just do is um, I would go through the medication list and then I would fold it. So pretend this is the medication list, you know, the medications are listed here. And I was just jot down my notes during rounds on the corner here. So this monitoring form always goes on the inside. So this is the inside and my medication list would be on the outside like this. It's just easier to flip through papers that are folded like this as opposed to flat papers. As opposed to when the papers are this, it's kind of more troublesome to flip through. I don't know. I just found that having the paper stacked like this together a lot more helpful. How else can you impress? By being well prepared for your rotations. How? By taking good notes and having proper references or guides. Always make sure you have a good notebook on hand too. I brought this everywhere with me. And again, these white coat pockets are gigantic. They actually fit these notebooks. Um, take really good notes, you know, especially during orientation or the beginning of the rotation where your preceptor is going over, you know, how they would like the notes to be done, um, the, the workflow, the nuances of the rotation, the small little things of how to order labs or, you know, anything. I think it's important to write those all down because preceptors don't like to have to re constantly repeat their explanations. You know, treat this as like a job training. You know, you want to do your best. You don't want to constantly ask your trainer to constantly repeat the question, right? You want to look professional. You want to be um, a good, fast learner. So I think it's really important to take notes. In addition to a notebook, you should make a reference booklet. Okay, so for those of you that haven't seen my TikTok, um, I talked about this on there. Um, I said every healthcare student, whether pharmacy, medical student, whoever is on rotations, I think it's important to just run to your nearest, tar uh, not Target, uh, Dollar Tree, buy these cheap little album covers, buy album books, 
and it's perfect for rotations. You print out clinical guidelines, little like lecture charts or tables that are good references and put them in these little inserts. And then you, if it's perfectly in your white coat, bring it with you on rounds. If you have something that you need to reference or double check, um, it's perfect. And you can press your preceptors if they quiz you. You know, sometimes if you don't have the answers on top of your head, hey, you at least you have it in your white coat. And it can still impress your preceptors that you have this ahead of time, you planned it ahead, and that you're prepared. Lastly, how to impress your preceptors? Having good patient presentation skills. How? By utilizing the SOAP format. Lastly, I think it's really important to be able to present your patients. As after working as a hospital pharmacist and precepting so many different students, ability to succinctly and effectively present a patient, it's very impressive. And it should be a standard. You should be able to do this. So for us, you know, we get a little disappointed when, you know, we have students who don't put in the effort to present their patients to us fully. Because for me, as flow pharmacists, we're floating through different areas and we might not know the patients as well as you do. If you've been rotating through, you've been on rotations for a couple weeks, these are your patients, you know them by heart. But when we um, are covering and you just go, oh, this Mr. So-and-so, he's doing fine today. You know, that's that doesn't cut it. We would like and appreciate a full thorough presentation. Um, even though we might not be your formal formal preceptor, um, we do have a say in your score, on your grade, and we do give feedback to your primary preceptor. So take it from me, just because at the end, we do have a say too in our experience, how it was with you. And it does a world of a difference if you're able to give us a full, thorough patient presentation. So there's a lot of different examples out there. Um, this is just how I personally did it. It might not be the perfect example of a soap note, but this is just a brief version that I like to do. Patient is a blank year old male with past medical history of, here you can mention diabetes, blood pressure, AFib, etc. Presented to ER for blank and admitted for blank. His initial vitals were his labs were within normal limits except blank. So here you can mention any notable labs that are abnormal or irrelevant. So you can say he's febrile, you know, his labs were within normal limits except, you know, let's say his potassium is elevated at 5.5. For his primary issue, problem number one, the team started blank, continued his home blank, or holding his home blank. For his problem number two, and, you know, it goes on and on. So this isn't as a thorough soap, but is much more succinct, but tells you everything that's important that the preceptor should know. And at least it's better than, you know, um, patients here for AFib, they restarted his DOAC. That's it. You know, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I've had students do that. You know, they gave me the bare minimum just because I wasn't in their primary preceptor. I was just covering. Um, it's maybe a little sad. Covering pharmacists, they would appreciate a more thorough bit patient presentation just so that they can have an idea of the patient that they're working for.